Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. Today is Thursday, April 17th, 2014. Here's a quick look at what's coming up. Tonight, the New York SAFE Act is met with mass civil disobedience from gun owners. And original Black Panther Larry Pinckney exposes the truth about Al Sharpton. The public is manipulated, and people like Al Sharpton, opportunists, blood-sucking opportunists, are the ones who do it. Good people are going to crush you intellectually. It's begun. You can feel it. The gun control law, known as the SAFE Act in New York, is quickly becoming a total and utter failure, as there is now massive civil disobedience opposing the law. Well, Never saw that one coming. The state of New York is refusing to say just how many gun owners complied with the mandate to register their so-called assault weapons under the SAFE Act. Yeah, the SAFE Act, there's an Orwellian title for you. And there is a sheriff out there who says he will not enforce the measure, suggesting that just like a similar law in Connecticut, the gun control effort has been a total failure as more and more Americans engage in mass civil disobedience against curbs on the Second Amendment. And good for them. Apparently, owners of the assault-style weapons had until Tuesday to register their firearms under the new law. But check this out. Firearms advocates are saying that only around 10% of gun owners have actually complied. That's, that's awesome. And I think it should be interesting to see how uh, officials plan on enforcing this law. I think it's going to be very, very difficult. But we'll definitely keep you posted on the progress of the so-called SAFE Act out there in New York. Meanwhile, former Mayor Bloomberg has just announced a brand new $50 million gun control campaign that is supposed to target what he calls illegal guns as well as educate the public on just how dangerous guns are. Wait a minute, do I, do I hear Eric Holder? One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Mm-hmm. And here's what Bloomberg had to say yesterday on NBC's Today Show. This is not a battle of dollars. This is a battle for the hearts and minds of America so that we can protect our children, protect innocent people. So the individual right to self-defense under the Second Amendment is being attacked on all fronts. And that includes more Gestapo-like behavior from the ATF. as They are actually targeting gun shops for their customer Purchasing records, if you can believe that, and you may recall last month, we reported that the ATF raided a California gun parts store for its customer data. Well, now the agency is trying to force a gun owner in Maine to shut down his entire business because they had the nerve, the audacity to defy the ATF and reject their demand to hand over his customer records. They actually wanted to scan every single page of the Pack and Arms customer database located in Samford, Maine. And don't think for a moment that the ATF just walks into these gun shops and approaches these gun owners all polite-like. Uh, like, uh, hey, sorry guys, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but if, if it's not too much to ask, we're wondering if we might be able to... Uh, I don't know, uh, maybe have access and make copies of your, your customers' purchasing records. Uh, no, that's, that's not how it goes down at all. They go in there like gangbusters. A typical raid fashion, they go in there with guns drawn during normal business hours. And this is more Gestapo-like intimidation tactics in the new America. And you can bet that this trend is likely to continue and escalate, even though collecting customers' buying records is totally illegal, well, at least for now anyway. Of course, they're trying to pass laws that will, that will change all that. But for now, they just come up with various excuses to see the data sheets. In this case, the owner was blamed for selling a gun to a guy who may have given it to a convicted felon. They call it making straw sales. And they want to revoke his 
gun dealer's license with, without a hearing, I might add. So rest assured, the federal government will try to find excuses to track every purchase of every firearm. And it was just last week where Attorney General Eric Holder told everyone that he was thinking about finding ways to put gun tracking bracelets on everyone's wrist who owns a firearm before they can access their weapon. Vice President Biden and I had um, a meeting with a group of technology people and talked about how um, guns can be made more safe by making them either through fingerprint identification, um, the gun talks to a, a bracelet or something that you might wear, um, how guns can be used only by the person who is uh, lawfully in um, possession of, of the weapon. Wow. That was the United States Attorney General seriously talking about gun tracking bracelets. Others have suggested installing RFID chips inside of every gun. I mean, these people have truly lost their minds. The Hill newspaper reports for bracelets and biometrics that will render all the other guns illegal. That's the battle plan. And I've told you that forever. And so is Larry Pratt. They're coming. They're coming. And that was earlier today on the Alex Jones show. Look, the federal government wants all the purchasing records from the gun shops. They want to track each and every single gun. They want to make gun registration mandatory. And that, my friends, that ultimately leads to gun confiscation. From my cold, dead hands. That's right. Come and take it. That means you, Bloomberg. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Just a reminder, after the show, we're going to have a report from Leanne McAdoo. It's about equal pay for women. But right after the break, I'm going to sit down and talk with former Black Panther Party veteran and victim of COINTELPRO. He was a political prisoner for 10 plus years, Larry Pinkney. And we're going to discuss the latest revelations that the Reverend Al Sharpton was once a cocaine dealer who turned into an FBI informant. As many of you know, he's also a chronic master race baiter. So uh, anyway, you don't want to miss it. Al Sharpton, we're going to talk about him with Larry Pinkney up next on the InfoWars Nightly News.